Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing off the Prefab Creator. So under the Tools tab, you would click Open Prefab Creator. It's its own separate window. It's actually a, f it's a fairly involved tool, especially if you have already existing materials, but I'll get into that. So the first thing you're going to do is hit the button to select Model Folder, which brings up the pop-up to choose a folder. In this case... I think I made a little temp one. There we go, under temp. And I'm going to go ahead and select it. And it'll actually show you the names of all the models in there to make sure you have the right one selected. So done with selecting folder. It actually, at the top, you'll see the second step lit up here. Find materials and models. And by the way, if you ever want to go back, you just simply click on a previous folder. And it'll actually pick up off of that page. So done with selecting folders get materials, I already found them, it did remember that, done with finding materials. Now organizing materials. So there's a couple nice things in here. So I actually do a lot of exports from Blender. Sometimes I'm a little lazy and I'll have the same material and I notice it duplicates it with a 0 .001, 0 .002, etc. Um, any person who uses Blender is very familiar with what I'm talking about. I call them material duplicates or material instances. So what I did was this thing would automatically, when you click that, it will look for anything that ends in a point zero zero anything and actually reduce it down to its base name so in the way it would consolidate the materials now cool thing is this is also if um let's say you had multiple things so let's say i had grass zero zero one grass zero zero two and i consolidated and it would over to the right it would actually say grass and grass it would consolidate them down into one material so it's very useful for that one reason alone you can also, let's say, for example, you could change the name of it right here. You could actually, so when you double click it, it sends it over to the right. You could select multiple things and actually rename them all at one time, which would also merge them in effect. Double click it over here and it actually sends it back. Unfortunately, Unity never provided a multi-select list box, so I had to go to this, I can't remember where I first saw this typo, multi-select setup where you have a left and a right, but uh, most people should be kind of familiar with the idea. So that's where you would type the name, that's where you'd rename it. Simple enough. So I'm done with organizing. Now this next step, step number four. Now the reason it took a second, it actually created the materials right there. Now on this next step, you're actually able to link to existing materials. So some of those materials that you create, or all of them, you may not even need. So you'd have to manually delete that materials folder. I'm going to show that off. So over here under modular terrain and temp. It actually created the materials folder where it actually put all the materials that it's actually downloaded from the models themselves. The reason it does that is so you do not get tons of duplicates of materials because it's a pain in the behind to fix it later on. I wanted to make this something that can save you a lot of time. All right, so in this case, so let's say, for example, I don't want to use that cube material. Instead, I'm going to select it. I'm going to substitute the material. So in this case, I actually do have another material for that. So I'm going to go over to the first world protections, the modular pixel forest, materials, and um, I'm going to go to terrain. And I'm going to say this is the grass block in fall color. And it would automatically change that. So I, you, you would go through and do it for all of them. And you notice it goes back to the last folder I was just at. So it should be con pretty convenient. So done with substituting materials. Last thing, um, you can optionally add a mesh collider. I will tell you, Mass requires the mesh collider in order to paint materials, and also I believe it requires it for the eraser to work. You could choose whether you want to add an empty parent or not. By default, it is on. Um, most people from my discussions like having an empty parent object over their object, and then you can preserve the model hierarchy. So what the model hierarchy I'm referring to is, is if you have any child of parents in it, and no matter how deep it goes. Some of them also will have certain trans, um, transforms applied to them, such as rotation scale offsets. Um, it would keep that intact. It actually goes down through the child of the model and actually replicates that as a game object, or as a prefab in this case. If you do not check that, it actually merged them all at one time into a single mesh. If there's multiple um, models with multiple meshes in a single um, excuse me, if there's if there's multiple meshes with multiple materials and it combines them into a single mesh, it works just like the merge meshes tool where it actually creates one mesh with several sub meshes, each having their own separate materials. So I'm going to create the prefabs. Uh, that's about 20, 30 prefabs. Actually, I haven't even counted it yet. 
All right, 16 creep abs. There we go. So it kind of gives you a, a heads up of where everything's located at and what it did there. So over here on the left, you'll see it actually created meshes. Very simple, right? Um, it just put, simply puts the, word, puts the word mesh in front of the actual model name. And that's because I merged it. If you didn't merge it, it would be quite a bit different. In fact, I'm going to show that off right here. Because on this one, I actually left the hierarchy open. I mean, I said to preserve the model hierarchy. For example, like the fence rail for the hill is actually composed of of two posts and six actual railings, which is why there's a total of eight, zero down to seven. All right. But in this case, like I said, one simple model. There is rail hill. So I'm going to go to the prefabs themselves. I'm going to double click that same rail hill since I focused on that. By the way, I'm going to close this since I'm done with it. Now this one right here. Ah, yeah. So on this one right here, the original model, the original textures that were applied to these models, I didn't include in here, which is why it's showing up gray. Cool thing is I'm going to go to the mesh itself. Actually, excuse me. I'm going to go to the material itself. So let me back up, go to the material. And that was under, and this is actually under fence post and fence rail. So I am going to go to the inspector. I'm doing this, this just for the demo. Normally I would have actually linked to the existing material that I was already using for it. But in this particular case, and that's the fence post. And this will be the fence rail. The double I'm actually going to get rid of on that since I don't need that material anymore. And fence rail. So now I'm going to go back to that same prefab. Ah, that was my original old model where I did use a double. So I'm actually going to, uh, I will show it full screen. I did use a double at one time. I actually redesigned it. You'll see when you see the pack that it actually uses both. It uses two different posts and it actually has different angles. So I couldn't just use one big long double one. Also, let me go to, here's the fence rail. So as you can see, it applied the material to it. Everything is UV mapped on the kit. It's a simple UV mapping. But as you can see, um, the prefabs themselves are all linked to one specific material like that. So I didn't actually change the material. I simply changed the texture on the materials that came out of it. Um, with yours, when you actually have your own, when you um, have your own models, if you embed your texture in your in your model, there's an option in Unity where you can extract the texture. Otherwise, if they're separate files, just make sure they're in a folder with your models when you do all this. It will automatically create the materials. It will automatically apply the correct textures. Afterwards, I personally recommend creating a textures folder as a subfolder of materials and actually moving all your textures to there. So what mass is going to create in the end, let me delete that thing right there. Okay. So what mass is going to end up creating for you is three folders. It's going to create materials, which will contain your materials. It'll contain meshes and it'll contain the prefabs themselves. It does not actually touch your original models they are all still going to be there. So you can still keep a backup of those elsewhere if you need to. All right. I hope that helps. Talk to you in another video.